All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's been a while. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me. It's Dustin Nolf with Keller Williams Realty. the Dustin Nolf team and the Full House LLC Pittsburgh Property Management. So, so quick, quick shout, shout out. I want to thank everybody who has subscribed to support me on Patreon.com. Really appreciate that. Um, this is the link if you're interested in checking it out. Head there. Um, we do group coaching for agents for 10 bucks a month. This is just the general subscription level. You get access to downloads such as our expired listing mailer that we send out every day uh, from my team, uh, 0% for sale by owner agreement, uh, listing presentation or pre-listing presentation uh, examples, Craigslist ad copy and other stuff. We've got a lot of uh, downloads available for our patrons. Uh, our patrons, they have to subscribe at least at the ten dollar level to access that stuff. We do group coaching for teams at a hundred bucks a month, and we do one on one coaching for a thousand bucks a month. There will be some good links uh, in below here in the uh, summary of the video. So please check those links out as well. Uh, I'll have links to some of the other videos that I might mention or discuss in this video also. So what we're talking about today is for sale by owners and what you do once you've got the appointment. So I wanted to thank uh, one of our patrons. His name is Rasim. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Rasim asked, I got, I got the appointment, so what do I do next? So he, he used our uh, lead generation techniques to book a for sale by owner appointment, and now he doesn't know what to do once he's in the appointment. So we're going to look at that today because approaching a, a for sale by owner listing appointment is going to be a little bit different than approaching your standard listing appointment or an expired listing appointment, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. So thank you for joining us. Uh, please, if you like the content, subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell so you're notified of new videos as I post them. And hit the like button. Hit the thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And feel free to comment. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future or information you'd like to uh, hear about, post it in the comments below. If you have any questions, post it in the comments below. And your big takeaway. So if you watch this video and you have an aha moment, please post that in the comments below. I really like to see those. So let's get rolling. Listing appointment. So we're talking about a for sale by owner listing appointment here. So the one, the key, key words here is listing appointment. Um, does the for sale by owner know that you're showing up to do a listing presentation? Um, that was kind of the one hiccup that I had to learn to work around uh, when dealing with for sale by owners and it took me kind of a while to realize my technique and, and the way I felt most comfortable approaching for sale by owners. So the way I like to approach a for sale by owner is that I don't pretend that I have a buyer for them. I don't give them any sort of BS story about why I'm there. I want them to know that when I show up I'm going to give you my listing presentation. You're going to sit down and you're going to look at what my team does to sell your property or to sell properties. So I'm giving you the sales pitch. Um, so they need to know that before I show up because I don't want to show up and they think that I have a buyer for them uh, because in most cases I don't have a buyer. I don't have a buyer because I'm not marketing your property. If you'd let me market your property, then I can get you a buyer. So a lot of agents are taught by their broker even to approach a for sale by owner listing appointment by asking, hey, I've got a potential buyer for your property. Can I come preview your property with you? And that's how they get their listing appointment. And they go into it and the, the um, for sale by owner, the seller thinks that this person actually has a buyer and the agent's going in there with a sales pitch trying to sell the, the seller. And for most sellers, that's going to be a huge turnoff. Like this is not uh, 1950s, 1960s. Uh, that's not how you approach things there. You know, a lot of people already know the gimmicks and the tricks that agents use to get in the door. And they know when you tell them that most of the time that you're BSing. Uh, and when you get through the door and then you start selling them, you're, it's going to be a huge turnoff. 
So I like to make sure they know why I'm there, right? Uh, I, I'm not going to give them sales pitch. I like to be honest and let them know. Uh, and one of the best questions you can ask then to get that appointment is, so listen, I'd like to sit down with you and show you what my team does to get property sold just like yours. We can sell properties fast and for the most money possible. Could I sit down with you and at least show you that? The for sale by owner usually is going to give you the objection. We're not interested in working with an agent. I understand that, but 70% of for sale by owners end up listing their property with an agent within two weeks or so of them trying to sell the property on their own. So what I would like to do is meet with you and show you what it is I do to get property sold. So if you do end up needing a good agent, you know who you can reach out to. How's that sound? If they give you another objection, they might give you the objection, I'm not hiring an agent. They might just say again, I'm not hiring an agent. I'm not dealing with an agent. I'm sorry, but I don't need to meet with an agent. Then the follow-up objection handler that I use, that I suggest our agents use as well, is that I understand you don't want to use an agent. That's great. You're marketing your property on your own. Don't you think it might be good for you to learn some marketing techniques that you may not already be using that you could use to get your property sold faster and for the most amount of money? They should say yes, right, because you're leading them with that question. So they're going to say, well, yeah, I could use that. Well, great. You have nothing to lose then. Let's meet up. I'll show you what we do to get property sold. You're going to probably learn a couple things that you can implement on your own. So, you know, ultimately, you don't have to hire me, and you're going to learn some stuff that you can steal off of me and use to sell your house. Sounds like a no-brainer to me. I'm not charging you anything for the meeting. So if, if, if you use that one and you still can't get the appointment, then you need to follow up because, you know, that's a, what I found is that's a great objection handler, and it's gotten us in the door at several listing appointments in the last couple months even for, for sale by owners. So what do you do? when you get there then so what we're, what you're doing is we've already we've scheduled the appointment so they know that you're going to give a listing presentation okay so when you show up the first thing that i usually do if i got like coat on or uh, baggage uh, you know i carry my my uh, briefcase satchel around um i'm going to ask hey do you mind if i sit this down at the kitchen table or whatever you know whatever seat looks like a good, to be a good location um and drop that stuff off and then say let's take a look at the house first okay i always like to start at the top and work my way down if it's two story three story whatever so we start at the top work our way down we're going to take a look at the mechanicals take a look outside um and then you know let's have a seat i just want to make sure you still got time to go through the listing uh, presentation with me i'll show you what we do to sell properties um you know you're priming them you're reminding them that that's what you're here to do and then you're going to sit down at a seat in a table, like at a table, because that's the best place to give a presentation. I really I hate it when sellers don't have a table or or they sit you down at their you know comfy cozy uh, sofa and you're trying to like show them what's going on on your laptop screen and that sort of stuff. That typically does not work the best. I like to be kind of side by side with them at a kitchen table. Um, so that's where I'm going to prefer to set up, and I'm going to ask them to set up there if they do have a kitchen table. Uh, I've done listing appointments standing at the countertop of a kitchen, too. So I'd rather be standing at the countertop of the kitchen side by side than sitting in a comfy sofa where they might be sitting in a lounger over here, and there's no um, immediate communication or proximity. And this is a good time for us to ask good questions. So I would highly recommend coming up with a sheet of questions that you're going to ask before you do the listing presentation that are specific to for sale by owners. So here are some of the good questions that you can ask. If you do end up working with an agent, how long do you think you're going to give it on your own before you actually hire an agent? So how long are you going to market this property on your own before you end up hiring an agent? That's a great question, and a lot of agents don't even bother asking that because they think, well, this for sale by owner doesn't want to hire an agent. Most for sale by owners actually have a plan that they're going to try to market it for two weeks or three weeks while they get it fixed up, and then they're going to put it on the market with an agent. So if you ask them that, you're going to get a timeline, 
And that timeline can help you if you don't get the uh, listing right then and there. It can help you on the follow-up. So if they say, well, we're going to give it another two weeks because we got to have new carpet put in next Tuesday. And after that, we were going to probably put it on the market if it wasn't sold. Well, now you know they're hiring an agent. They just told you they're going to hire somebody and you're sitting in front of them. So you have a pretty good shot at it. Uh, so that's one of the best questions you can ask. How did you come at the price? And most, a lot of for sale by owners say, well, we went on Zillow and it said that, um, you know, the, the Zestimate for our house was like $500,000 above what my neighbor's house sold for. So we thought that would be a great price because we would love to make $500,000 more than my neighbor. Um, which is, you know, that's an exaggeration, but a lot of for sale by owners use Zillow and use some sort of Zestimate like that. And if, you know, we all know that Zillow is not accurate at all. It's pulling data from assessment sites, uh, other real estate sites. It pulls all this data from all these different places and then gives you like an average or something. There's some sort of algorithm that it runs and it's not correct. Um, so for example, my property I'm selling right now, my old home, um, it was on the assessment site as a two bedroom house when I initially bought it. It's it's almost a four bedroom. It's it's a giant. You know, it's one of the biggest houses in the um, in the neighborhood. It was in there as a two bedroom, one bath. Okay, and it was assessed as that, which is great for me for taxes, but not great for me for resale. And and when you went into Zillow, it had it mislisted in Zillow. Um, we put that property under contract for 175 grand, and, and the Zestimate was for $70,000. Okay, so it was over $100,000 off of what the real market value ended up being. Uh, so, th and there's a great example of you know why you're going to say that you don't want to trust the Zestimate. But how did you come on price? Like maybe they did their their research and they did come out at a decent price, and they did take all those resources into account. Um, we want to know that if they say, well, our neighbor's house sold for two ninety five, and they had a dated kitchen and we updated this kitchen. So we're going to get three seventy five for this house. Well, that's a little bit absurd. Um, you, you need to look at what the value of a kitchen is in that neighborhood and how much money they put into it. Um, but you get an idea then of where they think the market's at anyway. And their neighbor's house, they may have no idea, but the neighbor's house maybe had um, a very updated kitchen and they were looking at like old pictures on Zillow because the, the pictures weren't updated, you know, um, or the neighbor's house could have sold off the market to an investor and they are severely underpricing their property based on bad data. Um, so those are good things to know. Um, you're going to ask them things that create doubt, like for sale by owners, like how, how do you stay safe during a showing? Like, uh, that's a good question to ask. What do you mean, how do I stay safe? Well, you're, you're meeting like a complete stranger here and walking them through your house, just you and that stranger. Like, how do you know they're actually a buyer and they're not somebody that's like looking to uh, do something horrible? Oh, well, I never thought about that. Well, why not? You know, that's something I think about every day because this is my job. All I do is show people houses and, and sell houses. So I need to think about safety every day. Um, so that, you know, that raises doubt. So what's the... What's the path that the seller can take to be safer, right? One of the things that we do to make sure we're safe is we pre-qualify all buyers. So we're going to ask uh, if they've been pre-approved for financing, and if so, what lender they've talked to. Um, sometimes we'll even ask for a photo ID before we start working with them. We like to meet with all our buyers before we take them through a house because we like to make sure that we know who they are and what their goals are. Um, you know, number one, we don't want to waste time with somebody who is looking at houses they can't afford or that houses that aren't going to meet their needs. Um, but number two, we want to make sure that they're qualified and they are legit before we take them through our clients' homes. Uh, does that make sense? We, yeah, it does. How do you pre-screen your, your potential buyers? Well, what do you mean pre-screen them? Well, are you asking those pre-qualification questions? Are you getting a copy of the pre-approval letter first? Are you getting a copy of the proof of funds before you take the, a cash buyer through your house? How do you deal with investors who are calling that are just looking to put a lowball offer in? These are questions where we, you know, there's stuff that there are things that we deal with every day as an agent or as a broker, and the seller is not has no experience with. 
Um, so, you know, 50%, I would say 50% of the buyers that are going to approach a first sale by owner are going to be investors that are looking for a deal. How do you, have you screened those, those people out? Or are you showing them the house and wasting your time showing properties or showing your property to uh, somebody who's going to offer you half price or 70% of ask price? Then you want to give the listing presentation. So right now I'd like to show you what we do to sell properties. Um, and then go in, you know, go into it, start showing them what, what you have to offer. Um, our list, a good listing presentation. I don't know if I did, I attached this or not, but I will post this on Patreon. I will post our full, my team's full 26 step marketing plan on Patreon. So you guys have a good resource. If you want to, you know, offer a whole lot of great stuff above and beyond what your broker is already offering, that is going to be a good resource for you to check out and be able to use and say, this is our marketing plan. This is what we do. And this is how we get you more exposure than any other agent and any other brokerage. Uh, that's what that marketing plan is. So that's what, that's what I go over whenever I do the listing presentation. I want to show them real examples of real properties that we've listed and how we've advertised them to get results and get the most traffic possible. So I'm going to show them uh, real examples of our marketing plan. And I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to also lead towards the things that they seem most interested in. So I had a listing appointment at one time where the sellers really, you could see like their face brightened up and they, they really got excited about Facebook pay-per-click advertising. Um, and that was something that the other agents they had talked to was not offering and didn't do. And it really caught their attention. So I went into more detail about that specific thing. Uh, and we ended up listing the property. Once you get through the presentation, you're going to want to uh, ask them, you know, if I can get you, if I can net you what you want to net and get this property sold in the next couple weeks, what's stopping you from working with me? It's a good question. And if you ask that question, you're you like, I would say 20 to 40% of the time you're going to get, well, nothing really. That sounds good. We'd love to work with you. Uh, a lot of agents, go to listing appointments and don't ask for the business. Uh, part of closing is asking to close. If you don't ask to close, you're not getting the listing. So you have to ask them that. And, and another way I like to word it is, are you ready to get this house sold? And that's like a subtle, I'm asking them, are you ready to work with me? Basically, uh, most people know that they pick up on that vibe and they're going to, they're going to, if they have any more objections, they're immediately going to go, put their defenses up and say, hey, no, 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 no. We're not ready to list with you. Okay, why not? Just ask them why. Well, we had talked to this other agent who sold a couple properties in this neighborhood. And if we listed it, we were going to list it with that agent. Great. Why would you list it with that agent and not me? Well, they've sold a couple properties in this neighborhood. And that's awesome. Uh, now you have an objection to handle and, and you're going to you know, figure out how to handle that objection or use the scripts that you already know to handle that objection. But you're not going to get the business if you don't ask if you can have the business. So you're going to ask for the, the business. You're going to ask, are you ready to get this property sold? And if, if they say yes, then you're going through the paperwork. Great. Let's go through the paperwork and get this property on the, on the open market. <clears throat> Some techniques that we use in order to get the listing when you have strong objections. Okay. One of them is our 0% commission listing contract. It's for, for sale by owners only. And I already have uploaded this to Patreon. So if you're a patron uh, at the $10 level a month or higher, you can download this 0% commission for sale by owner listing agreement. What I do is I use this as an addendum to my listing contract. And while, what I'll do is I'll give them a uh, listing contract that's only good for a short period of time, but then I use this as an addendum and it states that if they find their own buyer and that buyer did not run across any of my advertising and did not is not working with an agent, then the for sale by owner can still work with that buyer and pay me nothing. Uh, and they have the option of paying me nothing and doing it on their own, or they could pay me as a transaction licensee and I'll provide the paperwork for them. Uh, or they can 
pay me to represent them. So they would pay me like three or four percent to represent them, but I would not be getting paid to represent the buyer. So I wouldn't be getting paid a full commission there. Um, and that's that's if they bring the buyer and that buyer had nothing to do with an agent and did not contact us through our marketing or anything like that. So that 0% commission contract, that's a great way to get somebody to commit if they're not ready to commit. And you say, listen, you can keep marketing the property at any price that you like. You can keep your for sale by owner sign up right next to our for sale, uh, for sale sign. You can keep marketing on Craigslist, Zillow, wherever you want. Okay. Um, so they can keep marketing the property if they want. What usually happens if somebody signs that agreement is they're like, man, this agent has got this. They're marketing it. You start generating leads and showing the place and they're like, I'm done with this. This is awesome. This guy's doing a great job. And then they're done and and you've got the listing for, for good. You're not worrying about losing a commission or anything like that. Some of you are going to ask, well, why would I do that? Because I could lose the commission. Yes, there's like a 99% chance that you're not going to lose the commission, though. And I think it, actually it's like 98.2% chance that you're not going to lose the commission. Because 98.2% of all real estate transactions in America involve a real estate agent. So as soon as you list that property, the likelihood that that seller is going to find a buyer who's not working with an agent or didn't see your marketing is less than 2%. Okay, and it does happen. And if it happens, and you got to give up a commission, and you listed a property for free, who cares? You had a sign up, you had a property, you're advertising, and you should have gotten at least a couple great buyer leads from it that you can close on. So you got some leads out of it. You're still going to get some closings. Uh, the other thing that we'll use is a one day listing agreement. So we'll say, hey, we'll give you a one day listing agreement. How's that? That means I got to earn your business every day. That means I got to do a great job every day or you can fire me at any time. Um, that gets sellers thinking that otherwise didn't want to work with a real estate agent. And our listing agreement, you know, our listing agreement states that, you know, yeah, we can list it for one day, but they got to give us at least 10 days to get everything up and running. And then if they terminate, um, we have, I think it's up to six months. If we found a buyer during that time frame, during the window that we had it open, if that buyer ends up buying the place, then we still get paid during that six months. So you <clears throat> you are protected if you have a good standard listing agreement, even if you give them a one day listing. Uh, beyond that, so that's it. Like if you can't convince them with those uh, weapons in your in your armory there, then it becomes a follow up game, and it's going to be the agent who follows up and provides the best um, kind of customer service while they're trying to sell it on their own, <clears throat> that's going to be who they end up listing with. So you need to be that person. Uh, so that's it. I hope you like the content. If you did, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up. Check out the links below. Would love to see you on the Patreon site. Um, if you have any other questions, comments, or anything that you'd like to see, please post it in the comments below. Thanks for joining me.